Hey, it's Fletch. I'm Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Welcome to this audio version of my latest blog, Swatting. Confidence is, well, unknown for now. Well, there's no denying it. Swatting is well past being a trend, a fad, or a nuisance. This act of cyber terrorism has reached the stage where it's becoming a jans just another news story that shows up in our nation's headlines. While some see this as a harmless prank, it actually places citizens and law enforcement officials at great risk of casualty or even death. Back in December of 2017, a swatting incident in Wichita resulted in the fatal outcome where an uninvolved person, Andrew Finch, was mistakenly shot by police who were responding to a report of a dispute with shots fired. The incident was made up the address reported was incorrect, and a horrible turn of events made this a worst-case scenario. Now, while it's unfair to make any assumptions without being there and part of the incident, there are some conclusions that can be learned from this, and many other incidents as well. First, let's look at any violent or critical incident that takes place today. A minor fender bender takes place at a busy intersection in downtown USA. There are no injuries, and the involved parties are out discussing whose fault it is. Now, statistically, at least 85 to 90 percent of those people passing by will have a cell phone. So if even a small percentage, a fraction of those folks call 911, it's going to generate 20 or more calls regarding the incident, maybe even more. Now, out of those calls, some will report it accurately, some will minimize the situation, and some will exaggerate it to be a fight in progress. And the 911 dispatcher needs to use their good sense and intuition, filtering all of that information being received, the tone of the voices, the emotion, and make their best guess on priority when assigning that call. And they do this based on call after call after call after call. See the first issue? Multiple calls about a minor traffic accident compared to a single call in response to a gunshot fired in a residential neighborhood. So that fact alone raises suspicion about the call's legitimacy. Not enough to ignore it, just enough to raise a question. Now, the second factor is that many swatting calls come in through what I would call non-traditional communications methods. 911 is probably the most well-recognized number worldwide as an emergency brand. If you asked 100 people what the emergency number was, all would likely say 911. Ask them what the 10-digit number of their local police department is? I'd be shocked if more than a few people could tell you what that was, and most would look at you like your dog does when you say, Cookie? TTY relay operators for the deaf or hard of hearing or on administrative lines with no caller ID, or transferred from another agency, or anything other than 911, when coupled with the fact that it's the only report of a highly visible incident, puts the context of that call into the highly suspicious category. Again, not enough to ignore, but just something to be highly suspicious of. This is where technology, additional training, and past statistics can provide great benefits. Collecting data on a national scale can all provide great benefits. So collecting data on a national scale is an excellent chance to reveal common trends, similarities, and the statistical probabilities of potential outcomes from various incidents that would be of great value in command and control decisions being made. So fortunately, the FBI is now looking at all of this data and putting it into a database. And hopefully that'll be available to public safety in the immediate future. Now, in no means am I advocating fully autonomous RoboCop style dispatch decisions or that decision-making authority. I'll leave that to my great-grandchildren to start to socialize. Maybe great-grandpa wasn't so crazy. But I'm totally advocating for AIR, Artificial Intelligence Recommendations. Now relax, this is no more dangerous than using a popular online tax program to file your simple IRS 1040 each year. It's simply the culmination of logical decisions derived from statistically accurate source data of the probability of a scenario having a specific outcome. 
It's simply a tool that when coupled with experience, command and control field experience can assist in taking into consideration all of the localized and geopolitical data and information that comes along with a supervisory role. So when you think about it, this is no more of a risk than an accountant using a calculator to add numbers. In fact, I'll argue that it's likely a bit safer for everyone concerned. AI is aiding in making more and more critical decisions each year. And as long as the human factor stays a part of that model, ultimate control won't be compromised. That wraps up this audio version of my latest blog. This is Fletch. I'm Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to hear others, check out all my blogs at Fletch.tv. Plus, remember to like and subscribe. That way you'll be immediately notified whenever a new podcast is published. Thanks for listening. And if you're in public safety, thanks for what you do. Stay safe, take care, and have a great day.